before we move any further, we have to fill in some mis missing information in our assetsfix.csv file, and that is the commission column. This will be critical for backtesting as we simply can't ignore commission by setting it to zero. This information isn't pulled uh, via the MT4 bridge in Zorro from Darwin X, and therefore we'll need to rely on the execution conditions page here to get what the commission is per order. In this case, the commission is stated per order, but we know from the definition of commission in Zorro that it is calculated calculated while well used on a round trip basis. Um, so for uh, for incorporating it into the assets fix.csv file in a way that we don't have to constantly change it with the uh, value of the corresponding conversion currency pair changing all the time, we're going to take a look at the commission value here and for simplicity's sake we'll set it to a value that is uh, representative. So here well, we have 2.5 euros being charged uh, to the euro dollar. So on a round trip basis, that would be five euros. Given that the price of the euro dollar is roughly in the range of 1.1 to 1.5, let's go with simplicity and for backtesting purposes to lean on the pessimistic end of things, let's set this to, in account currency units, six dollars. You could get more pessimistic and set it to a higher value. It's not going to be six, it's actually going to be 0 0.6 since commission is stated for currencies on a round trip, but as well as 10,000 contracts track basis. So if it is six euros or six dollars in this case for a hundred thousand euro contract size, then we'll need to adjust it by 10 and get it down to 0 0.6. And let's set this as 0 0.6 for all three majors that we have in our list. So that takes care of commission calculated on a round trip basis, adjusted to 10,000 10, contracts for the currencies, and we'll do the same exercise with the Apple stock, going over to Stocks USA and NASDAQ, where Apple is second in the list, confirming that the values stated here are correct. So for instance, 20% margin required, therefore leverage should be five. If we go over to Apple's entry in assetsfix.csv, that leverage is indeed five. Lot amount, well, there's the minimum order size that you can execute without your order being rejected. That is minimum size and contract set to 10, which is also set to 10 here for the Apple stock. Commission again is missing. So if we go over to the commission per order, $0.02 per contract. And we know that the minimum contract size is 10. Therefore, we very simply take the round trip of this at 0 0.04. And since commission needs to be stated on a per contract basis for non-currency assets in Zorro, you could take the 0 0.02 multiplied by 2 to get 0 0.04 USD per contract and set that value over here to either 0 0.04 or something more pessimistic, compliant with the minimum order size such that you have a value that enables you to backtest considering commission in place as opposed to not having commission in place at all. And that's simply it. The other aspects of um, the configuration here in terms of swap long and swap short at negative 2.88% and negative, uh, negative 0.22%. These have been pulled correctly from uh, the MT4 bridge API as well into the file. So with the exception of commission, everything else was pulled successfully via the API, in our case using the MT4 bridge uh, in Zorro, and the rest of the information, in this case commission, needed to be extracted from the execution conditions page at DarwinX and populated accordingly in our assetsfix.csv file. With those inclusions and uh, using Zorro in this way, whereby we wrote a very simple script, and that script had the assets we were interested in. Uh, data for, we went through and clicked trade on Zorro to execute that script earlier on. That led to those closing prices being printed uh, being taken from the MetaTrader terminal through the Zorro Expert Advisor. But more importantly, what happened in the background was that Zorro went away and extracted all the information that it needed about those assets from the broker. That information was available inside the log folder in assets.csv. We opened that file, copied everything in there, came back to history, assetsfix.csv, populated our information here, filled in the missing pieces by going over to the execution conditions page on DarwinX, which is darwinx.com forward slash spreads. Here we went into currencies, forex, 
went down to double check that our values are correctly stated and also any information that's missing can be accommodated into the file. Uh, knowing exactly what value to put in here, given the definition employed by Zorro for that variable. So in commission for currencies, uh, it would be specified in 10,000 contracts as opposed to the specification of per 100,000 units as on the execution conditions page. The other consideration was that commission needs to be round trip, whereas on the execution conditions page, it is stated on a per order basis. So we had to not only multiply it by two, consider an appropriate adjustment to account for currency fluctuations as the account currency in use on the MetaTrader account here on which Zorro is deployed is US dollars, but the currency of commission stated on the execution conditions page for that asset is in euros. So we had to adjust it accordingly to get ourselves to a reasonably robust figure in order to backtest on the pessimistic side of things for that additional transaction cost, which otherwise if set to zero would have inflated performance if it was a performance strategy to begin with. But uh, always good to have all the transaction costs that you will be charged in a real live environment in your backtesting exercise there to make sure that your backtests are as representative of trading realities as possible. And with this, essentially, we've covered how to go about setting your assets fixed.csv uh, when trading at DarwinX via Zorro. Uh, commission at this point is not pulled via the MT4 Bridge API and any other values that you need data for. This was an example of how to go about letting Zorro do the heavy lifting, getting all the data in the back end, and then simply going over and finding that data in log forward slash assets.csv, copying it over to your assets fix.csv in history, making the necessary inclusions that uh, weren't there when you initially found the data. And once you've done that, closing Zorro and restarting Zorro to use the latest specification and get cracking with your backtesting. See you next time. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.